This will only include the beginning process my battery died on my camera. Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm going to try to attempt to record a video of replacing my front struts here on my 2004 Jeep Liberty. I got these Detroit axles here. Uh, see if I can get you the part number here. I believe that's the left side, hence the L at the end. And we'll switch over here and look at this one. I believe this one here is the right side for that strut. And if I have enough battery on this camera, because this camera is already showing that the battery's having a struggle here, I'm going to also try to do the shocks as well, rear shocks. So the first thing you're going to want to do with this guy is, um, before you even get into jacking it up and supporting it with jack stands, uh, you're going to want to, um, on the driver's side, the more difficult side to do. So we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, battery, the uh, little fuse panel here, which we're going to try to just loosen it and um, lift it out of the way. And also may need to disconnect some air hoses and stuff here too as well. So uh, we'll we'll go through it step by step here in just a second. But first, I got to get you set up on tripod. So as of right now, we're in the spot that we're going to want to work it because obviously, once I disconnect the battery, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, uh, move the vehicle at that point. So we're going to do that first. So the um, the fasteners on the battery are in 10 millimeter on mine. Now granted that can change if your cables have ever been changed. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get you set up on tripod and I'm going to attempt to do that for you. So hold on one second. Okay we're back here on the uh, driver's side again. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the battery. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tear off the negative uh, battery terminal first and get it out of the road. Like I said, this is a uh, 10 millimeter. Let's see if we can lift that off there. Let's grab a screwdriver. There we go. Push it out of the way, and then we'll do the positive side. careful when you're prying like this. I'm just gently giving a little pry because I don't want to put a hole in my battery or something silly or touch anything metal because we are on the positive side. I don't remember putting these on there that tight. <laughs> I'm trying to spread these ears open. There we go. That must have been the key. Spread the ears open. Alright, we're going to tuck that out of the way too so it doesn't get in the way. Okay, next part. I've got a 10 millimeter here with a couple extensions on it. Um, I'm going to go ahead down here and remove the battery. The battery holster, the little brace. Let's see if I can get to it here without knocking the camera over. And that's what this guy looks like. So get that out of the road, put that in a safe place. I believe that's all that holds this battery in, so now we should be able to push it back. And we're going to go ahead and put this over somewhere safe. Usually a good idea to wear gloves when you do this, because there's battery acid sometimes. Okay. So far the camera's still recording, obviously, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Not sure how this is going to pan out or even if I'm going to be able to post this video because my battery let it sit for too long for the camera and it ruined the battery. Even though it is a brand new battery, right from the, in the words of Eric O, Motherland of China, 
So let's see, we got a 13 millimeter here for the battery tray. Now I am missing a couple one here, I believe. Let's see if this will let us zip this off here. It's a 13 millimeter straight down here to the back corner. Go ahead and pull that off. I'm gonna get a magnetic dish here very shortly to start grabbing all this stuff that's important. This one, there's one over here too, but it looks like that's missing. So I believe that's all that holds this guy down that I can see anyway. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because we need to get to the uh, upper fasteners of the strut. Uh, yeah, that looks like that's all it's holding it down. So let's see what we got to do over here to make it happy here. I might need that flathead again, wherever that took off to. I do that. I leave tools down and I don't know where I put them. Half this video will be me looking for tools. So these little pry tabs here that you have to lift up on. And it's pretty common sense once you see it in person. This, so I'm not going to get too crazy in all oh, I've been showing this. I'm just looking to see what else is holding this thing down. I feel like this tray may have some, it's got to have something else. It just feels too snug. I'm also going to try to pry this guy off of here too. There's a little red block tab on it. Yeah, I'm so not prepared to make a video today. <laughs> just trying to make a video here because I figured I didn't see too many out there that were useful for this kind of stuff. So we don't want to crack these lines for the or either so you want to be gentle with them. We should in a perfect world, we to just lift this guy up. This tray, I don't see, ah, there is a fastener. So under the electrical box here, uh, straight under it, there is a fastener down there. I forgot about that guy. So I'm gonna go down there and try to grab that without losing it. Okay. And that actually stayed on my socket. I think last time I put grease on it so it would stay in the socket. Old, old trick. We're going to say Grandpa. I don't want to steal Erico's thunder of saying an old trick Grandma taught him. I think that's it. So now we can maneuver this guy. Ah, looks like we have an electrical connector over here on some of these old-fashioned Christmas tree connectors. But these are pretty brittle, which is good and bad. It means they'll come out easy, but it also means they'll probably break. So... And that is your battery tray. This is your, looks like your battery temperature sensor. If I were to take a stab in the dark as far as what this is, which doesn't look like it's gonna be very friendly. So we're just gonna set that off to the side instead of messing with that. So let me get you in here so you can see what I'm looking at. So now, if you look down in here, uh, these are the fasteners here. Uh, right there, there there and there that hold the upper strut on. This is an air hose for your front differential if you have four-wheel drive. So this usually just pries off ever so carefully. There we go. So we'll just kind of push that out of the road. So that's what you're going to need access. So that's why you got to go through this whole process of removing the battery tray. Now on the passenger side, it shouldn't be as bad because the only thing you have to take out is the air box. Now, some of this stuff is a little worn out, so like for an example, this is the, the breather tube, uh, or breather inlet uh, duct, I guess you'd call it. Mine usually just pops out. It may have some, uh, it may have some clippy clips down there that you gotta push in on each side, but mine's pretty worn out, so luckily for me, in that case, it just is out. This one here, you gotta come over and try to do the classic reach around here. There we go. This is hard doing one hand. I can see why these guys don't make videos very often. So that pops up and what we're gonna do is we could actually just leave that right there. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, and then what we're gonna do is, uh, this is kind of difficult to get out, especially if you live in a northeastern states. This whole assembly just lifts straight up. Uh, just be careful of your AC lines right here so you don't wanna tug on those. So. Um, see if I can sit you down uh, and try to record that process without knocking the camera over. So hold tight. 
Okay, I'm going to try to remove this air box here. Uh, I hope this is picking all this up in camera. Uh, straight down here, you probably can't see it, but there is a, yeah, a breather hose that just goes on there. Now, sometimes those can be on there pretty good, so try not to damage it. You can get this part, I believe, if you need this breather element hose that goes across, uh, usually just pops off. Uh, there's a plastic tube that goes across the upper intake here. Um, I had to replace that. I believe you can get that from Jeep. I think I only paid like 19 bucks for it. So, so this is the part. I'm going to try to lift this out without damaging the knocking the camera over. Let me grab a rag so I can get a better grip on that. Sometimes you can go underneath it. Uh, underneath the uh, window, or I'm sorry, under the wheel well here, and you can give a little squirt to the little rubber grommets that hold this down with some brake clean. That'll loosen it up. But usually if you give it a good old wiggle, they can be really in there. Oh man, three hours of me getting an air box out for a strip video. There we go. Like I said, sometimes I can be a little bugger. Just be careful, because he's got little tabs on here on the bottom, and uh, that they all go into these rubber grommets down here. Um, I spray my down with silicone every time I put it in, but for whatever reason, they still end up getting stuck in there like no ever. Set that to the side. Now, I can show you on this side what we're talking about here. Let me loosen this camera up a little bit, make it a little bit more easy to see what we're doing here. So, you have one, two, and underneath here, this bracket's hard to see, three, and then four is right there. So we'll probably take off this, um, this looks like a cruise control module right here, is what I believe this is. Um, so we're going to be taking these little fasteners out here, and I believe it's just these two right here that hold that bracket on. I want to say those are 10 millimeter, I'm pretty sure, I had this off before. Uh, so at this point, I'll go ahead and loosen these up, um, you don't really need to record that. Um, pretty confident that is 10 millimeter. Uh, if not, obviously just try the next size down or like an 8. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and knock these loose. This bracket will just kind of hang loose for this. Um, if you need to, disconnect the electrical connector. But if you can get away with not doing that, I would recommend it. It has these classic Chrysler pull tabs on here, locks. They can be a little bit of a bugger to get out. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to record that part. Um, and then the next step I'm going to do, you know, this is how I jack it up. You jack it up at your own risk. As I go down here... Um, and I, basically, if I can get this on there, I go to the rear cross member right there. I don't know if you can see that where the jack is. It's all the way underneath the, uh, I think it's right above the uh, oil pan, I believe, uh, or right behind the oil pan. I put the jack in the middle in a good, secure, solid spot. Um, I've never had problems jacking it up from there. It's not a super heavy vehicle. And then I'm going to put jack stands here. You gotta be careful because this doesn't have a true frame on it. And under there uh, is the uh, frame, if you want to call it that, that we're gonna sit it on. It's really hard to see, so once I get it jacked up and supported, I'll give you a better camera angle of that. So we're gonna do these Detroit axles here. Uh, so you need a 19 millimeter um, to loosen the lug nuts. Um, with these lug nuts, um, or before we do that, sometimes if you don't have air tools like I'm going to be using, a lot of times you may want to crack these lug nuts loose while the vehicle's still on the ground. Just get them cracked loose because a lot of times they can be really tight. So if you're using hand tools, you want to do that first. But first I'm going to disconnect that bracket for the uh, cruise control module and then I'll pick up from there. So just hold tight guys. Okay YouTube, uh, you won't see this, but this will be the third take on this section of the video. Um, I'm just going to cut out the other two. Uh, famous last words I said, loosen your lug nuts before you jack it up. I didn't do that because usually I torque them to spec and never had a problem getting them off and usually the air tool takes them right off. But guess what? Today none of that happened. I had to get my brother before he left for work to step on a brake to loosen the lug nuts. I've never had that problem before. But anyway, back to the video. Take off the lug nuts. Go ahead and whip these off. Lose it on the ground. Okay, so those are already been loosened by hand. 
set them aside. The only thing I can think of is usually when I've done anything, the brakes have been hot or been warmed up. Maybe that's what makes it easier. I don't know. I'm not really sure. <laughs> now, I do a little investigating here because I gotta see what I need to take off and what I don't need to take off. Obviously, I don't want to take anything off extra. I don't have to. Um, I believe um, what's going to make this easier is I'm going to try a couple things first. So let me bring you in here so you can see what I'm looking at here. Bring you off the tripod here. So basically, this is your upper uh, control arm that has the integrated ball joint that's non-serviceable. This is your steering knuckle, spindle, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, obviously, your brake uh, rotor, your caliper. Um, I gotta fix that too. Looks like that got jammed in there somehow. The backing plate of the brake shoe. But anyway, I've already replaced the tie rod ends. I didn't record that because of all this battery crap that I've been having issues. So I think when I had this off the last time, um, obviously the upper bolts that go up at the top of the strut that I showed you earlier, taking the battery out. This bolt uh, here is gonna have to come out. Um, also, I think I'm gonna take out this one down here at the bottom of the fork of the strut. And I think I'm also going to take out the that one right there at the other end of the fork. So I'm probably going to be taking those out. I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to have to crack this loose or not, the upper ball joint. I may have to. I'm thinking I'm going to have to, but I'm going to try without first. So let me get you put on tripod somewhere, and then I'm going to do my best to try to record this uh, with the limited room I have to work here. So hold tight. Okay, I think you have the bird's eye view from where you're at. So what we're going to do... Either way, at the end of the day, this is going to have to come loose here. This is at the bottom of the strut where it goes into the strut fork. Um, let me see what size this is here. It's not a 22. I think it's a 21. Um, yeah, so that's a 21. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw the uh, somewhat working. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use, change my mind. I'm going to use a short socket so that way I'm not much up in your much as far into your business here when I'm trying to do this with the camera. These should come out. I put a bunch of anti-seize on them the last time I had them in. I uh, replaced these strut forts with used ones that were in better shape that weren't as rusted. And I also um, painted them too and primed them. So that, like I said, came out pretty easy. So we're going to put that aside. Put it right down here on the ground where I know where it's at. Um, let's see here. These, uh, let's see here. Actually, I think they're the same size, but I don't want to say that yet. Um, I just realized that I incorrectly informed you of something. So when you look at the bottom of the strut fork down here where I was showing you earlier, if you back up a few frames, you'll see I showed you both sides you got to take loose. It's actually the front side that comes loose. Um, so I'm going to switch over to that. Here, without making you too seasick. So it's actually down in here. It's actually the front side. There's the, it's hard to see. There's the upper strut right there. Follow the fork down, back down behind there. And you see right in my socket, that's the side we're gonna be cracking loose. So let me get you set up there, hopefully, as best I can. Let's see if I can even get that in the frame. And then I'm gonna go ahead in here and loosen that up because that's going to have to come out. Now this shouldn't, in a key, um, let me rephrase that, in a perfect world, you shouldn't have to put a backup wrench on there. I may, I don't know yet, because it does have a little uh, metal brace that stops. So we're going to hit that. Ah! That came out really easy. Like I said, I anti-seized all this stuff before I uh, put it back together last time. So. Obviously, this is going a lot easier for me than it may go for you. So now that that's loose, um, I believe all I need to do is uh, tap that bolt through there. So let's see if I can give it a little tap roo here. Sorry, guys. I would be doing a much more efficient job than this, but I'm trying to record it, too. So that makes it hard to record and to... Uh, make a video here so let me get this air hose out of here so quit making all kind of noise uh let's see so we need to find something a prying apparatus <laughs> to pry the other side of this bolt out of here i may need to do the old-fashioned put the wrench on it here twist it out let me see what size this is first before i get too carried away probably be the size i don't have 
is this? Jeez, these sockets are all out, all out of whack here. All right, we're gonna go with 18, that sounds good. So give me a moment here. Um, you gotta be careful doing this, because if you, I'll show you what I mean here once I can reposition the camera. Uh, so what I'm struggling with right now is just getting that bolt down here to pass through the uh, brace that is part of the lower control arm. It has a bushing in it with a sleeve and that pass-through bolt is what holds the fork to the uh, lower control arm. It's not really stuck in there per se because like I said it's anti-seize, it's not corroded. It wouldn't have come out or uh, seized in there. It wouldn't have come out this far if it was. The problem is you see that metal flap that's at the end of it there? Um, this guy here, if you're not careful, that'll take your finger right off if you put an air tool on it. So be gentle like with that. So let me get your camera here. And I'm going to make sure you can see what I'm seeing before I start getting too carried away. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, like I guess said, you got to be careful doing what I'm going to do because this can really end up bad if you get your finger caught. Just going to hit it with this. Try to... Okay, so that's not working. I'll show you another trick. Not prepared to make a video today. You all can see that already, I'm sure. So I'm going to use a crescent wrench. And not tight, just get it behind the head there of the bolt. And then I'm going to see if I can get it to jiggle, jiggle loose here. Try to get it out of there. Oh, this really shouldn't be this difficult. There we go. There. Okay, so now we can take that out. You could have also went through the other side of this hole here with a really skinny punch and kind of tapped it through or even like an old flathead screwdriver that's thin enough to fit through this passage that you're not worried about banging up and run it through. So I'm going to sit that aside with our other fasteners. Now this as you can see is already loose. Now like I said this is where it gets a little hairy um, as far as being able to get this to do this. So what I'm going to need to do is go up top and we're going to loosen those upper uh, strut bolts. So I'm going to do that from up top. Um, so let me get you up there. I'm going to stop you and then reposition the camera here. Alright, hopefully this camera doesn't fall. I'm going to go ahead and show you. Now you can't really see anything. Like I said, I don't have anybody around here to hold a camera. I can't even get help from anybody working on this stuff, let alone hold a camera. So, looks like they're 18, so that worked out good. We are going to have to put an extension on that. Like I said, unfortunately, I'm super under, under prepared for this. got my extension. Uh, you can use just a shallow, it looks like, uh, impact socket because they're not super uh, super long or deep. I'm going to throw this up on here. That's going to cooperate. Hopefully, I don't knock the camera over. Oh, that came out nice. Put our bolt in my little magnetic dish. Got new ones with the new struts and uh, Detroit axle. These look like they might Lost that one, but that's not a big deal. Ah. I'm probably going to, not to be a spoiler alert here, but probably only record one side because this is batteries are shot on the camera. Okay. Perfect. Let me grab that other bolt that I lost down there. Uh, Got to get a magnet for that. nice part is, like I said, these Detroit Axle brand, they come with uh, replacement nuts here for the top of this, so. Okay, so let me see. I give it a little love tap here, ever so gently. I may be able to get that just to drop out. We'll see. A little bit, anyhow. I'm trying to think the least aggressive approach here that's going to require the least amount of work, so. Let me 
come back down here with the camera now and get you repositioned. Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is either going to be a part two or a continuance of where I left off during the video that I was currently making. Uh, this is a couple weeks later from when I actually made the video. Um, the camera battery on here was failing. Um, I've got another battery that seems to be holding up better. So I'm going to use it just to show you what I did. Once again, this is not going to be a step-by-step -step for replacing the front struts on my 2004 uh, Jeep Liberty here. Um, but I did go over all the initial steps uh, so far up to here or in the previous video. Once again, depending on how I end up uploading this to YouTube on how to remove the battery tray and move the electrical junction here out of the way and also how to remove the air filter box so that you can access the upper fasteners to the struts uh, for the upper portion of the strut. Now, when the camera died, I was struggling with getting the strut out of here and the secret seems to be with this uh, to change these without taking a whole bunch of stuff off of here and to make the job as easy as possible is what I found is once obviously once you have it jacked up and supported with jack stands um, I discovered the easiest way to approach this is to uh, first um, remove the axle nut um, that is a 36 millimeter back it out till it's almost completely off it's only on by a few threads and then give the nut itself but not the actual shafts you don't mushroom out the end of the CV axle uh, give this a little um, knock with like a hammer or rubber uh, rubberized hammer so that you can make sure that it's free and loose so that the drive shaft can pass through the front wheel bearing hub assembly uh, the next thing that I did was that I found to be helpful was um, to give better access for removing the strut here was I went here and on the sway bar link I um, backed out the nut here or the uh, the bolt here and there's a backup nut back here I can't remember the sizes I want to say this was a 15 and the back nut maybe also a 15 uh, or an 18 um, you'll have to mess around until you find the appropriate size that fits it um, but what happens is, is by releasing and tapping this upper uh, fastener out of the sway bar link, what that allows to happen is, is it allows the lower control arm to be pushed down so that it would give you better access to get the lower strut fork out of here. Now, once you've done the first beginning steps that I've already showed you, and you've knocked loose the uh, four fasteners that hold the upper portion of the strut mount into the actual vehicle through the strut tower, this whole set assembly is just basically being held in there at that point by the, the lower, I guess you'd consider the strut fork. So the next step I did was I backed out this fastener uh, while everything was still connected to make sure it would come out. Uh, this creates a pinching effect um, on the upper strut fork which squeezes and holds the strut in place. Um, so once you remove that um, what you want to do is you want to come down here at the bottom of the strut fork and you have to be careful with this little doodad because like I said and showed you in the previous video or where I left off was if you hit this with an impact um, this will chop off one of your digits so be careful with that. The next thing you want to do is uh, like I showed you in the previous video is on the other end of this strut fork which is right there you want to back that off. And I do believe I explained the sizes. I want to say it was either 21 or 22. Um, once you've done that and you've knocked this pass-through bolt through to the back of the vehicle out this end. Um, so once this comes out back out this way towards the back of the vehicle and sometimes you can use a um, uh, a punch, a small punch to go in from this side to help knock it through its little socket there. Now, depending on where you live, if you live in like the Rust Belt like I do, this can get seized in there. So far, um, the ones that I've done so far on these Jeeps have not, uh, but it is a, always a possibility when you live in the Rust Belt like myself. Um, so that's one thing. Once you've done that, um, what you may have to do, and I can't remember because I was trying to get this done quickly, is I believe the next step of what I did was I had to, um, I'm almost certain I had to, I had to disconnect the upper control arm from the actual steering knuckle uh, where the ball joint is non-serviceable in these by the way. Um, knock this loose and take it down. 
Um, you want to be careful not to use any kind of like forks or anything because you don't want to damage your boot if you're not planning on replacing the upper, if you're going to be replacing the upper control arm uh, to, you know, correct any issues, you know, with your control arm bushings or the ball joint might be needing to be replaced, uh, then obviously do what you need to do to put like a fork in here to pound this and separate it. If you don't want to damage it, what I recommend doing is you spin, get the bolt down to where it's only on for a few threads, and then what you want to do is you want to hit what the ball joint goes through, which is going to be the knuckle. So you want to give this a couple good whacks um, with a hammer. Uh, a pretty heavy hammer if you can, maybe from this end and this end, give it some good wax and this, you'll see it pop up, it'll pop loose. And then you can carefully, watching your fingers, go ahead and take this fastener the rest of the way off and this will allow this whole entire steering knuckle assembly to pivot out and towards you because it's still going to be held on by the bottom ball joint. So, uh, and of course the uh, tie rod end. Now if you feel that it's necessary, if you're having a lot of problems maneuvering this assembly to get the strut out of there, the other thing you can do is carefully go ahead and, and zip out the tie rod end and then once again hit here if you don't want to damage the boot with a fork or have a proper you know, uh, tool that will push up through here. They actually sell a separator for tie rod ends which I don't own. You can go ahead and hit here while pulling up on here and it will pop it out. Once you've done that and you've already had your, you know, CV axle loose, this whole assembly, you want to be careful because you don't want to rip your CV axle apart or ruin the boot uh, and try to resist pulling it out of the front differential if it's four-wheel drive because then you're going to get gear oil everywhere and you're going to have to put it back in and top that back off. Once you've done that and everything's loose, what you can do then is get a buddy, if you can do get a buddy, um, and if you can carefully... Uh, get in here on the lower control arm and I use a long bar uh, either a pry bar or I have an old weight bench bar and I support it up back here and I pry down on the um, lower control arm to lower it and then what that does is that enables you to take and push and slide this strut this this bottom part will have to come forward on the strut fork and allows you to maneuver it in a way that you can tilt it and get it out. Um, it was a little tricky. Um, I ended up taking out on the driver's side, which I didn't need to, but I was getting frustrated with it because it wasn't cooperating. I didn't end up taking the CV axle completely out um, of the front diff, uh, which then enabled me to uh, have better maneuverability because as you see, the CV axle passes through there. You gotta be careful when you're doing this. You gotta watch your boot here. You don't wanna tear it up with your strut fork. Once that's removed, um, once you have the strut laying on the actual ground and you have it out, the next step you're going to want to do is you're going to need to get this fork off the old strut. Now I used obviously quick struts as you can see here. Uh, they're all pre-assembled so I didn't have to compress any springs or any craziness that would cause injury. Uh, and then what you want have to do sometimes is you can get in here, you can get a punch and put it in into in between here thick enough that it will separate this and separate the little pinch that's in there. I don't know if you can see the label, but when you push it through this little hole, that expands the that expands out the fork, which allows you to pull the strut out of the fork then. And then once you're doing that, then you can just tap this fork off. Um, you know, clean up the fork, get any rust out of the inside of you know the little housing here where it slides up on there. You can get the clean all that out. Um, you know, maybe with some sandpaper or something, um, you know, maybe throw some primer on it. I threw a little bit of um, a knockoff fluid film, which is basically like a rust inhibitor. It's made by PB Blaster. Uh, just gave it a little squirt in there. Uh, it also helps when you're reassembling this to slide it back up onto the new strut because uh, of the oil in there. Um, and that also might help it from rusting and seizing onto there. Um, the only note that I want to make about these uh, Detroit Axle uh, quick struts that I got is that the actual springs themselves are smaller and shorter. Now I've already reached out to them and they said that that, you know, is acceptable, which I can't understand how they consider that an OEM replacement. Um, they do ride fine, but the lower or the front end of my vehicle is lower now. Uh, so that is something I caution you, you about if you are concerned about, you know, changing the um, ride height of the front of your vehicle um, on these Jeep Liberties. Um, you may want to go with an alternative um, replacement 
aftermarket strut if you're not going OEM and do a little more research because when they sent me the uh, lower post here which you probably can't even see but the lower post here is significantly longer and the spring is shorter and the overall length of the actual entire strut here from top to bottom is actually an inch and a half shorter which I, I found that to be a little bit disturbing because they're supposed to be you know direct fit OEM according to their website now they did send me an alternative no part number to what they originally uh, claimed to be selling me on the eBay site when you look at the stock picture on the eBay site for Detroit Axle for this vehicle it actually shows the um, what looks to be like the OEM strut with the the shorter you know actual shaft sticking out here uh, so I find that to be a little bit bizarre uh, but they claim that it's acceptable so um, just for sake of not having to you know argument's sake with them they are working they are functioning what I may do today is I'm gonna loosen up this uh, loosen this back up again open this up I'm just gonna slide it down uh, so it's flush with the bottom of the strut and that should give me a little bit see here's the bottom of the strut right here I, um, I'm gonna slide it down and try to get a little bit more ride height out of it and then I'm fine with that um, you will uh, 100% recommend getting an alignment with this after you've done this type of work. Um, I did replace my tie rod ends on here uh, a few um, weeks before I actually did the struts. Um, I eyeballed them, got them as close as I could using some, you know, the old fashioned rope uh, going from the back wheel to the front wheel with the wheel straight to adjust them the best I could. It actually rides straight. Um, but I do want to make sure I get that adjusted because I don't want to tear up my tires. My tires are still really um, in good shape still and I don't want to be, you know, destroying them. Um, but, you know, putting it back together is basically the reverse. What I recommend doing is going ahead and getting this tightened back up where you, where it's supposed to be on the new strut while it's off the vehicle. And then you can just take the whole assembly and fish it up in there and then reach over the top here of the vehicle over the top and hand tighten as many of the fasteners as you can you know on the upper end here for the upper strut to get it fastened down and that'll hold it in place so then while you're pressing down on a lower control arm you can then you know pivot it up and down until you get this fork to go back where it's supposed to be on the actual lower control arm here uh, so once you get it back on the lower control arm, then you can put this pass-through uh, fastener back through there and then go ahead and tighten it down to spec. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm sorry I didn't do a completion step-by-step. -step. Like I said, the battery uh, completely uh, went dead on me, and it was cold, and I just wanted to get the work done. So I apologize for that. It's not definitely not one of the best YouTube videos out there for doing this. I believe there might be a couple others out there uh, for doing this job. Um, so as far as that goes, um, you know, once you just put everything back together, you know, in the same order that you took it apart, um, just double check all your work. Now, one thing I made a mistake of, and you have to be careful, it was my stupidity, was I took the brake caliper off too, um, which I'm not even remembering why I did that, but I was just trying to get this done and I was having a really hard time getting the strut out of there. But when I went to the passenger side and took my time, I was able to get it out without taking so much stuff off. You just got to maneuver it and work with it and be patient and you won't have to take the entire knuckle off and remove the whole axle from the vehicle if you take your time and really pay attention you can get a friend to help push down on a control arm which then will allow you to get the like I said to get the strut out of there um, it is tricky I mean don't you know just keep if you have to walk away for a minute come back but you can do it I, I did it so it is possible now um, one thing I wanted to caution you about like I was saying a minute ago was uh, with the caliper, I took it off for whatever reason. I don't remember why but make sure my stupidity I accidentally when I had the brake hose I ran it. I didn't run it behind the knuckle <laughs> So I had everything bolted up. And I went to put the caliper I went to sit the caliper back on and the hose was in front of the knuckle Which is not where it's supposed to be it wouldn't even stretch Obviously you don't want to do that because it can get in the tire then and damage the hose so I ended up just taking the hose off and instead of having to take all the knuckle and the steering and the you know ball joint and everything back loose, I took the hose off the caliper, ran it back through uh, where it's supposed to be, and then just you know did a quick bleed on this caliper and everything was fine. So, um, but other than that, um, I really don't have anything else too special to share. Um, that's pretty much it. Let me get up here without making you seasick. Um, everything went back together fine. It definitely runs better, or I should say drives better. Um, it still hits a little hard, but I think it's just the design of these vehicles. Here's the passenger side, so you can see there. There's the nice 
shiny new spring in there. Got some dirt on it. Uh, so that's all reconnected again and everything. Um, it, it wasn't the hardest job I've done. I mean, I've done head gaskets and stuff. I'm just a DIYer, so. Um, yeah, and there's the new tie rod I did on this end. And the same drill, like I said, uh, I took out the upper fastener for the uh, sway bar link, which I may end up replacing them. That might get rid, rid of some of the little bit of, not necessarily knocking, but, you know, squeakiness. I may even replace these sway bar bushings. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll do a video, though, if I do it, so you can see how that's done. Um, other than that, I'll show you real quick in my messy garage here. Uh, this is my father's garage, so don't blame me for the mess. Um... This is the old struts that I took off here. As you can see, this post here at the end, I don't know, it's hard to tell because they're already on the vehicle, is significantly shorter. And the length of the spring here is actually a lot bulkier and longer. So, I don't know. Detroit Axle says they're acceptable. I'm just going to go with it and, uh, you know, hope for the best. But hopefully this video was helpful to somebody. Um, I'm trying to get back on to making these YouTube videos again. Um, I know I use YouTube all the time to try to find resourceful videos on how to fix things and save some money. Uh, once again, apologies for not recording the entire process, but that's an overall quick tip, I guess you would say, on how to uh, get those struts out of there and replace them. Uh, as far as the shocks go, because I started off the last video on how to replace the shocks too, I'd mentioned uh, they weren't too bad. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to see anything in here. Um, but when you come in the wheel, there's the upper fastener there. What I did was I jacked up the um, uh, vehicle. Um, I actually did something. It's probably not the safest thing to do, but I'll show you anyway. Um, I jacked up the vehicle here using the uh, tow hitch. I put a block of wood there, threw the jack on it, and jacked up the rear end so both wheels were hanging off the ground. Um, and what that enabled me to do then was to have the axle free floating in the air um, so when I disconnected the uh, shocks, um, I'd be able to maneuver and pivot the rear end up or down as necessary to allow the bottom fastener to go through. I'll see if I can get down here and record that and show you what it looks like. So that's the bottom fastener. You can see the label there on the new shock. Um, so basically just a backup nut on the back and then a pass-through bolt. Um, so this one here, like I said, they, they were super easy. Um, none of them were seized. I was very grateful for that. Um, probably because I believe the recall was done on this vehicle. They replaced the um, lower uh, rear control arms here. Um, or trailing arms or whatever you want to call them. Which is that long bar passing up, you know, along the muffler there. That is a recall on these because they rust out. They were replaced or free. So, my guess is they may have had these shocks disconnected already. Uh, and that's why I had no trouble getting these bolts out. Uh, not too difficult and they pass up through there through on the other side of the spring there so um, like I said I didn't really feel that that was totally necessary to record that video only because of the real reason of it being so simple so but this is your 3.7 2004 Jeep Liberty Limited on how to do a quick uh, you know strut replacement on the front of your vehicle Hope this is helpful. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.